baby boomers began to do during the late 60s and the early 70s is baby boomers really began to challenge and question the rules. And during the late 60s and the early 70s, well, baby boomers, some of you had pharmaceutical assistants. Some of you had more than others. <laughs> this is actually a picture of my two favorite baby boomers, my mom and dad. That's right, that's my dad there in the center with a flowered blouse on. <laughs> Just see a tablecloth, he thought, I'll make myself a blouse. And there's my mother in the corner. I love my mom so much, but look at what she's wearing. Oh my God, I can't believe she used to give me a hard time. I mean, it's, it's like a fishnet. What do you call those things? What are those things called? You pull them over your head. Poncho, yes. Get this, she actually made that poncho herself. <laughs> with a stick. The baby boomers love their team so much, they don't even call it a team anymore. They call it their what? Their family. They call the people they work with their family. Now, 50% of Gen Xers come from divorce. So when you say to them, we're a family here, they're just looking at you and thinking, really? We're going to spend Wednesday nights and every other weekend together? <laughs> this generation has had one, maybe two parents extremely involved, involved in the activities they participate in, the friends they have, even the jobs they choose. According to a Gallup poll, 90% of Generation Y report being very close to their parents. Compare that to 1974, 40% of baby boomers said they'd be better off without their parents. <laughs> it had dawned on me that even the way we write to each other has changed. For example, if someone from the traditional generation was going to write a letter to Tom Smith, how would someone from the traditional generation start a letter to Tom Smith? Dear, dear Mr. Smith, how would the baby boomer start that letter to Tom Smith? Dear, dear Tom, how would the, come on dear Tom, come up here, there we go. How would the Gen Xers start that letter to Tom Smith? Let's go with Tom, Gen Xers. How would the new millennium Generation Y person start that letter? What's up? Hey? Hello. They wouldn't even write a letter. But they may send you a text that says, I'm too hot for you. <laughs> What's my point? My point is we become frustrated when Generation Y does not use the tools we used to be successful. Generational signposts make that impossible. You cannot be frustrated with Generation Y because they use a different set of tools to get the job done. They will stand right next to you and text you. <laughs> and then they look at you and say, did you get my text? <laughs> One, sat right there in the living room, didn't it? It was huge. And you gathered around it, a little semicircle. You watched all four channels. Oh, sorry, three. Then what happened if you want to change the channel? You had to get up. You had to get up and walk to the TV. But that knob had fallen off months ago. It's just a pair of pliers stuck there now. So you went from the absolute just being on the love boat, yeah, the love boat of all the fantasy islands, and they moved into a barn of who you got up and, and bailed hay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like the Beverly Hills has been in rehearse. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry, this is, I'm just laughing at your misery. <laughs> I'm just curious, do we have any Gen Wires with us in the audience today? Any Gen Wires? Oh, look at them out there. A little pod of them. I get you just stand up here and watch them ignore me. She won't notice me texting under the table as long as I maintain eye contact. Let's see, what else? Yes, right over here. What was it? They're good teachers. All right, what else? They're outdated. They're outdated. And, and if, if you ever come to them with a... <laughs> they're 
are outdated, yeah. And sometimes you'd come to him with a new idea. Have you ever got a new idea, Jen Wires? You got a new idea and you come up to him and you go, hey, come here, take a look at this. I've got an idea. I think if we move this, change this, flip this, turn this, it'll be bigger, it'll be brighter, it'll be faster, our residents will love it. What do you think? Wow. <laughs> and this person over here who's been here for a long time, I mean a long time, this person looks at that and says, it won't work. <laughs> no, 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 really, I've given this some thought. Move this, change this, flip this, it'll be good. It won't work. Why won't this work? I've given this a lot of thought. Why won't it work? We tried that before. <laughs> we tried this before? When did we try this before? We tried it before you were born. <laughs> you know those big signs in the mall that, that show you where the, the stores are? There was a three-year-old girl. She was standing in front of that sign, and she was taking her finger she was placing it on the sign, and she was moving her finger across the sign, trying to manipulate the images. And when the sign didn't move, she threw herself on the ground and began to cry. <laughs> but she has a different expectation. And those are your future family members of your residents. They have a different expectation of you and the way that you're going to interact and connect with them. But for the very first time in history, your young transferee knows more about something you need to know. We'll bring a brand new computer home. We'll set it on the table. We'll call our kids over. We'll point to the computer. And we'll say to our kids, OK, how do you install the parental controls? <laughs> Not only do they have no memory of September 11th, they have no emotional connection to that event. Sure, they know about it. They hear, they hear their parents talking about it. They've studied it in school. But they have no emotional connection to something we think about, we talk about almost every day. And in less than 10 years, less than 10 years, 90% of this room is going to be working with, depending on, and even being managed by these people right here. And take my word for it, for many of them, choosing to work with you at your facility, it is the biggest decision they've made in their life. you got to give them information right away. And I'm not just saying a pat on the back, though, hey, a pat on the back is always nice. But there's this myth about this generation that they can't handle bad news. People actually say to me, oh, they just want pats on the back. They, they can't handle anything negative. I disagree. This generation has had bad news in their face since Columbine, Virginia Tech shootings, violent acts committed against their own peers, yet they remain the most optimistic generation we've ever seen. But let me tell you, they can handle bad news as long as you're part of that trusted set of advisors. If you're just one of those people that drops in once in a while to tell them what they're doing wrong, I can't imagine they feel connected to you at all. I do not think being a latchkey kid was such a bad deal. Because <laughs> as a latchkey kid, here's how it worked. At 3 o'clock, they let you out of school, and you're on your own. Your time was your own. No need to rush home. There was nobody waiting for you. You sauntered on home when you felt like it. You let yourself right in the front door. You could let yourself in the front door because you had your own key. Where'd you keep a key, Gen Xers? Anybody remember? A little string around your neck. You let yourself in the front door. You walk into the house, and there sitting on the kitchen counter was a list of tasks that had been left by management. <laughs> on time just means before management returns to headquarters at 6 o'clock. So if management, management being mom and dad, are due home at 6 o'clock, when do we start doing the tasks, Gen Xers? Yeah, about 5.45. But you know what? It's up to me to decide. I can decide when to start, when to stop. I can decide how many breaks to take. And if something goes wrong, there's nobody there to help me. i got to solve the problem, move on. So Generation X has become our most independent generation. They're an independent worker. They're an independent learner. And they enter the workforce. They join you. And their attitude is, hey, tell me what you want done. Give me the tools and training to do it, and then just leave me alone. Those of you baby boomers, Gen Xers, traditional generation, we need to swallow our pride and reach out and ask this generation to reverse mentor us. And that's not easy. You've been around. You have a set of skills that are still valuable. But if you really want to connect with this young transferee, with your young Gen Yers that you're working with, you've got to connect with them. 
Ask them for their input. Ask them for their help. The only reason I got on Facebook was I asked my 18-year-old assistant. She kept telling me I was putting the wrong things on my wall. I kept looking over here. <laughs> my point is that over time, there has been an erosion and changing of generational signposts. And this leads to conflict. Right now, 60% of employers report tension between the generations. 70% of older employees are dismissive of younger employee talents, and 50% of younger employees are dismissive of older employee talents. The reason being is because your generational signposts have an emotional significance to you that is absent with someone from a different generation. And that's why understanding the generations is so vital. Because the better we understand a generation, the easier it is to connect, the easier it is to collaborate, and the more successful we are communicating. Just like every generation has made great changes, this industry is going to reinvent the restaurant industry and make our world a better place. And this is your opportunity to have some say, some input, and make a difference. Thank you very much. Known as the generational humorist, Megan has entertained and educated thousands of audience members from all around the globe. She is the co-author of the best-selling book, Generations Inc., from boomers to linksters, managing the friction between generations at work. Quoted by the Chicago Tribune, CNNMoney.com, and US News and World Report, Megan has become the go-to expert for all things generational. Her clients include Dairy Queen, Burger King, Cadillac, American Express, Harley Davidson, Monster.com, and the CIA. A third-generation native of Phoenix, Arizona, Megan lives with her tall husband and four dogs that have a total of 15 legs, not including the husband. You do the math. 